In this video, I am joined by Slimer and George the Italiano as we talk about Tiana's Bayou Adventure. There are some images from inside the attraction released today. Um, we're also going to talk about the Morocco Pavilion tiles, the new tile work. We're also going to talk about this Walt Disney animatronic. George and I touched upon this in a recent video about it possibly coming to great moments with Mr. Lincoln. But where else could this animatronic pop up if it's a success over at Disneyland? We're going to talk about it up next on OG55. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. I have a fantastic panel. I got the Italiano. I got Slimer with me today. We're talking all about Florida, Orlando today, Walt Disney World more specifically. But George, the Italiano, welcome back, sir. If you could let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You can also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you can find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. There we go. And down below, we got Slimer. It's good to have you back, Slimer. Hey, thanks so much, man. Pleasure to be back with you guys on a nice Tuesday night. It's a work day for me, but I'm here. We're ready to kick it. We have a lot of good topics tonight. Uh, all Walt Disney World. So, uh, you know, Disneyland's been getting its love. Let's go ahead and give Walt Disney World some love tonight. And uh, let's let's talk tiles. Let's talk DeSantis. Let's talk all the things coming to uh, the Florida park down here. Guys, it was like heat index of 100 degrees down here today. And it's only May. So I'm telling you, if you guys are going to come in August next year, you guys want to go ahead and pack some sunscreen 5 million because – <laughs> you guys are going to need it. But um, anyways, guys, you guys can find me on the Orange Grove channel right here on Orange Grove 55. And on X, you can catch me at Slime Square 84. There it is. There it is. All right. Our first topic today is going to be Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Okay. So this is courtesy of uh, Drew the Disney Dude. Great guy. He does, he's the guy to go to when it comes to the Tiana's coverage. He's doing amazing stuff over there. Um, but there is that Imagineering show. The, the, this new Imagineering show and a trailer drop for the next episode in that trailer. We got to see some of the little bit of Tiana's. Okay. Now this is an image that was shown in there. Um, I'll start with you, Slammer. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, it looks very by bay you doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the lighting's certainly different. Uh, you can tell that a lot of the, 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 the shrubbery has been changed, but the trees pretty much stay the same looks like they put some illumination in the uh, arborage up at the very top center of the picture, but it's too early to tell. You know, this is just one image. I don't want to draw any conclusions from this one picture because this doesn't tell us anything about the ride. This is a, this is like the tip of the iceberg, um, but not bad, right? There's nothing to hate here. Uh, I'm sure you can find something if you look really hard, but I, I, I'm going to hold all opinions until I actually see the ride for myself. What about you guys? Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way. I mean, this looks nice. It does. There's nothing. I don't see anything necessarily wrong with it, you know, but like like you, Slimer, I'm going to wait until I actually experience it because the experience itself, when you go through each scene, when you have the music, when you when you take in the atmosphere, when you take in the amazing animatronics, the storyline, all that, when it comes together, makes a huge difference. And seeing right. something, a snapshot like this, that really doesn't focus on a whole lot to begin with. Yeah. How can you really glean any real opinion on the attraction based on this? But I will say, I think it looks nice. It does feel very bio-y with the, um, mm -hmm. the, the kind of, uh, I guess it's like this, like this, like hanging moss from the trees, stuff like that. That's a nice little touch. I dig it. I dig it. Um, there is also another picture of the signage, um, for Tiana's foods. And we'll get into that too. But George, what are your thoughts overall on this first image? Yeah, I think it looks great. I mean, it's nothing really to to gawk at, but I mean, again, it's something that you were just seeing a beginning image, as you both had said. You know, it, this is basically the startup point of the whole entire ride. So 
I don't think it's really something that needs to be done over the top. I think it just does enough just to kind of start you off to move into the storyline itself with Tiana. And uh, yeah, I think it looks great. Yeah, no, I do too. I do too. Now let's dive into this other, this other picture here. Cause we got a couple here, right? And this, the signage. Now I have to admit when I saw this, mm -hmm. I thought the placement was a little weird. And again, this is seeing it in like this kind of like, moment in time it might mm -hmm. the placement of the sign might make more sense when we kind of are riding the attraction and we get a little bit more of the story and what's coming ahead and things like that but just the image itself if we're going to judge it based on the image i thought the sign i don't like you know, it you don't like it what is it is it, off, is it the it's, sign is the placement what is it george i think it's a little bit of everything it's the placement i think it's the uh the color palette I don't really think it matches anything of the surrounding. Maybe if they would have used a little bit more of um, maybe some green, some browns. But I, I think, honestly, it's a little bit unnecessary, to be honest with you. I don't really think it's a sign that is needed. You could put a sign like this maybe somewhere in the queue um, to kind of set the, the tone and the stage for it. But I just think, really, it could do well without it. But again, yeah, I don't know the full storyline of what's going to go beyond the sign uh just as much as we don't know what's going beyond big thunder yeah um but <laughs> but yeah just to the photo alone i i think it it sticks out like an eyesore it, i do see some it looks like in the distance or just around that turn some crops or something mm -hmm. growing over there so this might be some sort of outdoor like little farm or growth area where it's, where she grows all her veggies. So maybe that's why the signage is, is, is right before that segment section. But what do you think, uh, Slimer? What, what are your thoughts on this brother? Um, so does this come with an announcement that says, and then you'll be truly living with the land. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. They should have added a little nod to that actually in this attraction. I think that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> why not? I don't know. It's, it's, it, I don't, I don't care for it really. I don't like the color palette. Uh, there's a lotus flower at the very center top of it. It says employee owned, uh, established in 1927. So now we know it's well out of or at the very tail end of um, the Wild West. So in terms of time periods, it's going to fall way outside of what up, you know, everything else that's going on in Frontierland. So now you got to remember the poster says in Frontierland, but 1927, um, I don't think that was the... I don't think that was the frontier anymore, boys. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I don't no. think so either. <laughs> I don't think so either. And that's interesting, Slimer, you brought that up. Because actually, I've been wanting to talk about that. And I, I just keep forgetting, to be honest with you. But like the, the attraction poster for Florida's version says Frontierland, right? Now, they, 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 they made all those posters or they, they, well, they, they designed that poster. And I'm assuming that's the poster that will show up in the park with Frontierland on it. But we were th we were all thinking like, and there were rumors that they were going to turn this into a little mini New Orleans. What do you think about that, George? I mean, do you think that 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 plan has been scraped, or do you think that maybe Frontierland is sort of just a placemaker until they kind of get to the New Orleans stuff? That very well could be, because um, yeah, if you go by time timeline wise, it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, it, it's possible that it could just be temporarily until they figure out if they're going to turn the. Uh, the one little piece of uh, Frontierland into a New Orleans kind of vibe. I think that would be the only way. So it very well could be that the sign could potentially just be temporary um, just to get that notion out. Hey, it's part of the, the frontier. It's sort of like a little bit of a band aid, sort of speak until they can figure out what to do with the details, because that was always my main concern. I didn't really have too much of an issue of, you know, princess and the frog, becoming this attraction but i for walt disney world but my main thing was how cohesive will it go with the surrounding land the area you know, you know what else it could be too it could just be a lack of communication between the the artists that do the principles and then the artists that are making the actual attraction itself and so they might have thought well it's going to frontier lane obviously but then yeah you know they didn't communicate oh no this place was established in 1927 and it's not actually in Frontierland because what we want to do eventually is we want to turn this entire section. Because, Georgia, when you and I were down there the other day, like we we point out specifically where that delineation would be that would separate, uh, let's say, a supposed New Orleans square 
from frontier land and it's a pretty clear demarcation line it's a it's a nice boardwalk can't miss it and that would be like the cutoff of where one land ends and another one begins but it, it could be just a miscommunication between those two departments or it could be like they don't give a shit like they're just like hey you know what 1927's frontier land the normies aren't going to care you know george and og i mean how many times we talk about like we're we're nitpicking it because we're the you know we're the freaks, but most yeah. people just don't give a shit. Well, yeah. and also, and honestly, too, we all know how uh, Disney is with signage of how <laughs> things could be misinterpreted or uh, misspelled or oh, dates right. wrong. <laughs> so no, that's I mean, true. that could you know that could just be another because you have to think who even really knows how long this sign has been done. This could have been one of the first pieces that was completed before they really got to know if they wanted to change anything into the new Orleans. And it's like, it was just sitting there and it's like, okay, yeah, we're putting up the sign, not even thinking that at the time when they made the sign, it was like, Oh shit. Yeah. This isn't going to be part of frontier land. It's going to well, be part of new Orleans. Well, and here's the other thing too, that sign that we saw the poster, right? The, the, the attraction poster we saw that says frontier land, they might know that that's not going to be the poster that's going to be in the parks. Mm -hmm. It might be Frontierland because they don't they haven't announced the New Orleans um, section yet because they're waiting for D23. Mm -hmm. So that'll be kind of interesting. If if the attraction opens and there's no attraction poster, that might be what they're doing. I don't know if it's showing up at the park yet. I don't think it has. So if it shows up, I mean if it shows up with Frontierland in the parks, okay, fine. It does it that I think Frontierland is probably gonna stay Frontierland. But if it doesn't, then they're probably going to wait for for D23 to announce this this new Orleans area. Here's the other thing too that I'm kind of curious about. I got to check this out. A very similar situation happened out here in California with with the Tower of Terror and Mission Breakout. Because Tower of Terror was technically part of the Hollywood backlot, right? Or Hollywood Land. And then it was rethemed to Guardians of the Galaxy and became part of Avengers Campus. I'm going to look into it and see how they handle that retheme. Because if it was, if the posters and all the marketing material when it opened in 2017 stayed at Hollywood, well, I, that kind I of think you it a did. I think it did. Don't quit, get me wrong. If you want to look that, but I think it did because th I don't think that they announced any kind of uh, Marvel or Avengers land prior to Mission Breakout because they threw in those little Easter eggs with that, right. uh, that, uh, what was it? That like it looked like a, um, manhole or something manhole that had like the a on it right no they didn't i don't think avengers campus got <laughs> a, 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 a hole right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. there was a giant a hole <laughs> but i don't think avengers campus got announced until the d23 and 2019 i believe yeah so it was like okay. a full two years so that's interesting so that might be what's going on here with the with the attraction poster saying frontier land they just haven't announced the new orleans stuff yet so that's why the, i have they, a Go, go they ahead, got, they're real, they really got to get their signage right, man, because, uh, George, you remember the one time we went to Casey's Corner and he asked for two blondes? I mean, it's so misleading. Mm. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Yes. <laughs> I know. I know. I, was, I, was like, I got all excited for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they said they gave you a foot long. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man, George, did you run? Dude. <laughs> 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 oh that's great <laughs> it's Fantastic. like i better be careful i don't want to limp away from this wreck <laughs> right exactly exactly yeah so we'll see we'll see but i'm gonna look into that mission breakout stuff because um it's a very similar situation i'm kind of curious how that was handled so we'll see what happens though but um our next topic though very interesting and and uh slimer you did mention this uh, at the top of the show but desantis DeSantis Oversight District outlines $100 million roadway improvements for Walt Disney World, World Drive, Western Way, and more. This is courtesy of blogmickey.com. In a complete 180-degree reversal from where we were eight months ago, the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District is considering $100 million worth of roadway improvements for Walt Disney World. As you may remember, the same district under, th under the thumb of uh, uh, Florida... Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis announced a 3.1 million reduction in roadway repairs for the 2024 budget with then District Ambassador Glenn Gilzine blaming the quote lingering effects of the pandemic and global supply chain. Here's the thing. 
It was just announced the other day, and I'm sure this has nothing to do with it. <laughs> nothing. It was Absolutely just, nothing. No. Nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's probably just a coincidence. But it was just announced the other day that Disney is now donating again to Republicans uh, in Florida. Again, nothing to do with this reversal, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but, but what do you think, George? What are your take on this? Yeah, I honestly, I think these it's just two separate matters. I don't really think it has anything to do with it. But yeah. um, but you know what I have to say? I mean, who are we kidding? It has everything to do with it. You know, <laughs> so like, you know, but but you know what? I would rather it be than to have all this tension and friction between uh, the, the state of Florida and Walt Disney World. Honestly, it's been an ongoing thing for for too long too long way too long and honestly yeah. i just want to just see you know the, the state of florida do their thing while disney world do their thing they can kind of create this uh somewhat workable relationship and you know what if that's what it takes you know so be it because i i think honestly while disney world has along with the 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 pandemic and the shutdown but also with the politics uh kind of bashing with them it it, it, they took a hit big time yeah no, so yeah, it, it'll it'll be a it, it's nice to actually see them kind of get back on track and um and this yeah. is for the confirmation that it was all political posturing because he was you know he was running for president of the united states and as soon as all that ended all that shit got soaked under the under the rug and it's just like hey walt disney my biggest single site employer in my state um what can i do for you you know right. and uh, you well, know, the, well, yeah, well, you also have to think too. It was probably his time to renew his Incredit Pass. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I don't know, man. He was at Universal Studios, remember? So he he might be a uni uh, guy. That's true. Um, but no, he probably was renewing his Incredit Pass for his lovely wife. But uh, you know what's funny was they were even talking about making all the the, the Disney property uh, signage, the road signage. You know, the ones that are purple and red, turning those into regular interstate green. Signage. They were making all sorts of mm-hmm. threats. You know, the reduction in um, investment for road for for road improvements, and now it's like, no, we're going to go ahead and budget you guys a hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah. What? Come on, How and does- that and that's what we've been saying all along on this channel and stuff. And we've had a few conversations about this already, and like you know, over the past you know year or so. But like, it was all political from the beginning. And like you said, Slimer, it was like the minute he dropped out of the presidential race. It suddenly everything kind of came together, you know what I'm saying? And suddenly they were able to come to a, an agreement. And suddenly things just kind of worked out, and it was just like, okay. And now, like I said, they're de- they're do- they're donating to Republicans again. So now, oh, here we go. Here's a hundred million dollars, you know. So it's kind, I, it's kind dude. It's kind of like when uh, you know when you owe, let's say, a hundred thousand dollars to gangster and wants to break your legs, and then when you pay it back, he's like, "Come over for dinner. Mama's cooking me some spaghettis." You know, it's like. <laughs> Were right, you trying exactly. to break my legs five minutes ago? Uh, I, I, I was just—I was just going to say I, I miss my—I miss my traditional spring breaks. <laughs> well, well, you, you know, you, you are—you are Italian, George. So you—you you, you know, you, you know, you know how it is with the Italian, the Italian mob, right? You know of course, is, uh, of course. Yeah. Don't mess with my uh, great uh, no knuckles, Louis. No <laughs> knuckles, Louis. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Definitely some mob behavior there, though, with regard to you know DeSantis and, and Disney. I mean, that's that's just classical corruption, man. I, oh. I don't know what else to call it except it's corruption. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like we always say on the channel, too many coincidences. Qu- too many coincidences aren't a coincidence. And when all the stuff starts falling into place and all that, especially after the donations and and after he drops out for president, it's pretty sus. It's pretty well, sus. And it's also. Uh, quite interesting too uh that uh our friend alia had uh brought up um what was it that uh, it was axios of, yeah axios it, poll yeah. Yeah, yeah that it was uh you know disney you know is now like up in numbers you know with the uh the positivity rate of moving forward as a company but right. also towards Republicans. You know, that was quite- interesting and we're, we're we're planning on doing a show on that uh, because I was surprised to see that. Not that not that I'm surprised to see Disney's reputation rising because they have been making moves lately to kind of moderate the moderate the company, what have you. But the fact that it it climbed with conservatives, because I don't really see that. I mean, 
you know, the, the temperature in the room with the with the with the everyday conservative, I think they still think of Disney as like this woke thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand with DeSantis because he's getting money now, so he's fine. But like with the with the regular voters and stuff, I still see that kind of animosity towards the Walt Disney Company. So I was kind of surprised to see them rise in in that in that in that poll. And again, it's one poll, you know. what I'm saying, I mean, what, if well, they, we got start rid of, more... they got rid of Tinkerbell, so that was a major impact. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they, they got rid of Tinkerbell's meet and greet, you know, but they added a. 50 foot tall uh tinkerbell and the drones in the sky now you know so i don't know i guess i guess someone didn't get the memo is that kind of uh, like a slide of, is that kind of like a slide of hand though right like yeah we got rid of the you know the the, the, the meet and greet but here we go right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the biggest tinkerbell you could find right over disney springs now you know and and then they and then they slip in a george w bush paintings exhibit into the american heritage like at the same time you know it's <laughs> It's it's not a coincidence. They know what they're doing, but you're right. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that saw that announcement because they're actually in the process of doing it right now. That exhibit actually, I'm squ I'm squeezing a, a topic in between the topics here. Like, sure. see this line right here in between George and OG. That's yeah. where this topic's going right there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but they're they're squeezing in that George W. Bush uh, art exhibit in the American Heritage, and you know, like if that's not placating to a party to try to get back some of its customer base for, you know, the, 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 you know, not being the ally you wanted me to be the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know what is that's so on the nose. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you said it. You said it, Simon. Apologize for not being the ally that you needed me to be. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so he'll never inter live that down. Oh no, never. Absolutely not. And so interesting stuff happening, but, uh, but I agree with you fellows in the sense that it is good news overall that Disney and the state and this district they're working together now because it's good for walt disney world it's good for the resort it's good for the fans cool we're past that dark page of disney world's history you know that was so much drama and it was really a cloud over the whole resort for a long long time so we're good now we're going into d23 i think disney world's gonna get a lot of fun announcements um at that you know fan uh, fan convention in august so we'll see Next topic, though, is Walt Disney Animatronic. We did a show, was it yesterday, George, where mm -hmm. there are heavy rumors that they're going to have an animatronic of Walt Disney added to the great moments with Mr. Lincoln at Disneyland. Okay. I said, I think this is a cool idea. I think it all comes down to execution, though, because you can't mess up the Walt animatronic. This thing better be the most advanced AA you've ever done, Disney. It better look amazing. Because fans are going to nitpick this thing, you know what I'm saying? And rightfully so. I mean, this is Walt Disney we're talking about here. But um, are we sure the, we don't want it to look like uh, Hillary Clinton dressed up as Trump? <laughs> and all? Yeah. <laughs> Right, exactly. They're, they're going to dust off the old Hillary uh, animatronic and <laughs> put a suit and tie on it. Hey, here's Walt. <laughs> that was Disney's first attempt at playing both sides there. Just like, eh. Right, exactly. Read, read between the lines. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> So hopefully, yeah, hopefully they, they don't do that. But um, we'll see, though. I mean, if this is successful and it gets a good reception with the fandom and, you know, great moments with Mr. Lincoln gets a lot more traffic, you know, it's not exactly the hottest ticket in town at Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? You can go in there any given day. It's not really super busy. What? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I'm shocked. I can't believe the normies aren't like lining up for it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, which is interesting though, to be fair to Disney though, that shows like, honestly, like I look, we do complain a lot about Disney and they do mess up a lot. Right. But the fact that that thing is still there, considering that that thing is not a draw really, you know what I'm saying? For the normies, right. They could have turned that into any IP attraction or, or show that they wanted. The fact that Lincoln is still there, Hey, got to give them credit for it. But if it is successful, Slimer, do you think there's a chance, you know, because Disney does like to, you know, build things in bulk because it is a little cheaper when you do two instead of just one. Is there a chance Walt Disney World might see a Walt Disney animatronic? And where would you like to see it go? Uh, yeah. So, I'll, you know, in the chats. Uh, so, OK, let me back up a little bit. So this idea I originally heard from Jack over at DSNY Newscast. Go check out his channel. Jack's amazing. He's one of the best. Um but he was talking about this rumor and i was like man wouldn't it be great if walt disney and um the sherman brothers were at the very introduction of the carousel of progress reenacting the piano scene with some you know lines incorporated into it so that way they're introducing the carousel of progress to the audience referring to them 
playing a little number, you know, they can start playing, you know, the great big beautiful tomorrow song they play for General Electric. And it goes right into the ride. And you know what's funny is is just now I had another idea. Like, what if Walt Disney World they had Roy Disney and he talks about his brother Walt over at Disneyland? Like he says something along the lines of go see my brother Walt over at Disneyland at the uh the, you know at the American not the American but uh, the Walt Disney presents Abraham Lincoln attraction. And so they right. can kind of like, you know, um uh would like refer to each other, you know. Uh, right. and, and you have to go to the park to go see that one. But yeah, I would, I can definitely see Walt or Roy and Walt Disney World. I'd, I'd like to see them incorporate the Sherman Brothers now that, um, you know, Bobby passed away. So I think that would be appropriate. And, uh, you know, like you said in the DMs, man, like that announcement would blow people's lids at D23 <laughs> because it's, it's like so appropriate because they had such a, um, they have such a legacy with the company. And yet there is no, there is no, um, uh what do you call it like there's no attraction for them you know the way that they have like walt disney presents over hollywood studios where yeah. they honor their legacy in any kind of like unique and specific way so i think that, incorporating the carousel progress would be apropos it would be absolutely perfect and like you said with richard with richard just passing and also so it would be a great way to sort of pay homage to the sherman brothers and it's just perfect it's just so perfect and you have all the audio there in that clip right where where, where richard and, and bob are at the piano you have walt disney standing there the audio is there you just have to build the animatronics and then you just have that same audio and you're golden man i, I when you when you said that idea in the dms um i was like okay which is actually it. which is actually funny because i said the same thing to og over the phone before i even knew your idea in the yeah day he did yeah. where it was like so it's like okay you have two yeah. disney buffs thinking the same thing now how yeah. come the big wigs at disney can't like, yeah it's, it's it's too it's serendipitous perfect. man yeah. it's it's, it's yeah. perfect because that's what actually essentially made me think because when you wait outside before you enter into the building they have that that segment with uh uh, Richard Sherman at the piano. You had his brother on one side, Walt on the other, and they're singing a great big beautiful tomorrow. And he introduces them, and they go off singing a great big, and they kick up their heels and everything. That would be really cool to see an animatronic. Oh thing. yeah, that would be that'd be oh, awesome. Man. But I mean, even if it's just them at the piano, just showing that segment, that would be awesome. I do like also your uh, idea of incorporating like one brother over on one side to the other where you kind of have to see both to, you know, to understand what it means. Um, it could actually get people to, I know it probably wouldn't, it'd be kind of far fetched to encourage people to say, Hey, you know, yeah, let's go over to Disneyland or let's go over to Walt Disney world. But I love having those subtlety connections, um, which is completely off topic talking about Walt Disney and then talking about the guardians of the galaxy. But that's kind of how I wish that they did with mission breakout and cosmic rewind where in cosmic rewind they could have said in the 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 key the, the the show scene we just busted out of the uh collector's mm -hmm. fortress and now we got to deal mm -hmm. with this or something subtle right where it, right. it ties in you know both storylines so i i do like that notion of where maybe walt could say something about roy and vice versa i think yeah. that'd be really cool yeah the, it would be, it, oh go ahead i'm sorry george oh no 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 finish and then i'll say my uh suggestion yeah, no, I I think it's I think it's a great idea, and I think too like when they did the when they did the partner statue, I believe it was in the early '90s or mid '90s or whatever. That that worked, you know what I'm saying? But but look, before they did that, a lot of fans were probably thinking like, "Oh man, I don't know though for a statue of Walt, could that work? Is it really going to look like him?" And it turned out great. The partner statue statue looks absolutely fantastic. And actually, they've even improved upon that concept. I think over the years, with a lot of these other statues that are more on the ground. I know Magic Kingdom has a has a Roy and Minnie um statue where they're on a bench which i absolutely love that one uh but at dca we have the walt and mickey um on the ground as well it was a younger walt i thought that was kind of clever hong kong just got an um, um a walt and mickey statue where he's sitting where they're sitting on a bench so they've improved upon the statue concept now the animatronic thing could also be very similar where they do the animatronic at disneyland and they improve upon it like you guys were saying maybe they add a roy animatronic and they sort of reference each other on each coast and what have you. So there's a lot they can do with this. It's all comes down to execution. It can either be the most beautiful tribute to these men 
or it can be a disaster if it doesn't turn out well. But I think they're going to, res- uh, I think they're going to respect. I think they're going to, I think they're going to understand the weight of what they're, what they have to do here. And I think it's going to turn out really, really well. Yeah. So what do you think, George? Yeah, absolutely. And as what I said to you over the phone, OG two is, I'm I'm saying it's it is impressive, but I feel like that they still miss the mark a little bit when they utilize the the AI uh, hologram that they used for the Disney 100 um, right. exhibition, mm-hmm. uh, the ex uh, um, thing that was traveling to run, where it it sounded like whoa, it kind of looked like him, but yet it felt like he like had a toupee on. I felt like they hit certain yeah. things where it just didn't seem, it seemed like it was someone impersonating Walt Disney. Yeah. Um, it, it felt like a lot of the essence were there, but not completely. I think they can do much better utilizing an audio animatronic. Um, Cause they still probably have to work out a lot of the, the AI bugs to kind of get it, you know, realistic. Um, but I do. And I've been, a huge fan. I actually got a chance to talk to an Imagineer about this back in 2011 when I did the dine in with Imagineer. They don't, I don't know. I don't think they do it anymore at Walt Disney world, which is a bummer because I really enjoyed it where you uh, pay like an upcharge price and you can dine with an Imagineer either at the Hollywood Brown Derby at Hollywood studios or the flying fish over at the boardwalk. And uh, I actually brought it up because it was something that I was somewhat passionate about it. and i said you know you guys do great work with with audio animatronics have there ever been a consideration on walt disney and he uh he told me that they were considering down the line he said nothing is set in stone but they just wanted to be very careful with it because they also wanted to pay um the wishes to walt that he didn't want to be you know, kind of put up on this pedestal kind of thing. But he said, we're trying to look past that because we were trying to find a way to honor him and not insult him. Yeah. And that, and that ship has kind of sailed to be quite honest with you. Once they did the partner statue, you're you're literally, by the way, by the way, that came from uh, Disney Imagineer, Gary Landrum. Shout out to Gary. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, exactly. But it, like you, we literally put Walt on a pedestal, like literally on a freaking pedestal with the partner statue. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it's like at this point, we've already yeah. done it. It's kind of like, in my opinion, it's kind of like alcohol at Disneyland. It's already there. Just so one of my actually ideas. Well, actually, I have two. I said one to OG earlier, but then I forgot about my original thought when I first brought up the question. Uh, to uh to gary back in 2011 that um the first one is if they were to kind of revamp uh the hall of presidents and kind of maybe do something incorporate walton there um you know they could he could you know just talk about maybe find some audio or something where he's just talking about you know america or presidents in general you know and then you'd have you know all the the presidents you know surrounding him uh, including uh, Hillary Trump, you know, just saying, but, right, um, exactly. but, <laughs> but, um, so that one I thought about, and then going back to my original thought, if they made an audio animatronic of Walt and placed him somewhere in Epcot, where he actually has the, the, the blueprints of what Epcot, the original Epcot was supposed to be, where, you know, he's pointing to the different places and everything, because you have, audio footage of that i mean it's basically him describing what epcot was going to be so i always thought that would be kind of kind of interesting as well let me let me ask you slimer i'm kind of curious then i'll go to you george i'm kind of curious you guys' opinion on this so okay so let's say we get the walt animatronic let's say we get one here at disneyland let's say we get let's say they even do your idea your guys's idea with the whole carousel of progress thing right okay cool and the animatronic looks great but what if they use AI to get him to talk? Like, what if it's not actual audio from Walt, but they write a new script using AI and it sounds like Walt saying it, but it's not Walt saying it. Would you be okay with that Slimer? Or is that a little too, is that kind of crossing a line? They kind of did it with the Disney 100 hologram thing. Do you think, do you think that would be okay though in a permanent setting with an animatronic or should they just get the audio from Walt and just use that? 
Okay, so there, there's there's certainly an ethical dilemma there. I think that the problem is not so much that they're using AI to recreate his voice. It's that they would have to create they would have to use AI to recreate his voice in such a way that it would be exactly in character with Walt the human being. Like there's no distinction between Walt and what he says and what the AI says. So his ideas, his notions, uh, his beliefs about the world, if they're going to incorporate that into, uh, you know, whatever they, they synchronize with the, with the AA, it has to be Walt Disney. Like there has, like, it has to be able to pass the Turing test. Like you, 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 if you, you if you listen to him, you have to be able to say, okay, this is, this is definitely Walt Disney I'm listening to. It's a recording from him. Maybe they dug it up from the archives and there's no way for us to distinguish uh, the, the artificial intelligence produced uh, product versus Walt Disney. I think that's at the root. That is what the actual concern is. Obviously there's the ethical dilemma, but ultimately it's not going to be judged on the dilemma. It's going to be judged on the pro the approximation of what they produce and the exactness to Walt's ideology and who he was as a human being. And yeah, I think if they, if, if they nail that, then it's a home run. But if they don't, then it's going to be in question. Yeah, well said. Now, that's where I'm at too, Slimer, with that. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, I'm sure they can get the voice to sound like him. Like, yeah. but, but it's like what you were saying, like the ideology and like, would Walt say that, right? Like, if you walk away from that going, hmm, yeah, it sounded like him, but would he have said that though? That's where they're going to come into some issues. What, what do you think, George? AI voice, new script, or should they just kind of play it safe and just use the audio they have from Walt? I, I feel for me to just kind of just go off the audio, I think it would be more in sync with the the recordings that they already have with Lincoln. I feel like because it was back in the time during those those recordings and it would mesh well and it would actually be Walt Disney speaking out of a Walt Disney animatronic than just a program uh, doing it for him, so to speak. Um of course, I know that they could maybe do some tweaking with it where maybe like if he, there's a line that they need him to say, like saying, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Abraham Lincoln or something that he didn't actually say, they can kind of use AI to kind of intertwine with his original audio. But I would more so just kind of take it from a playback. To okay, be that's fair. So you're, 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 you think the bulk of it should be for actual audio Walt, but if they need like an introduction, like, and ladies and gentlemen, here, here's you know, President Lincoln or yeah. Mr. Lincoln, then, then, you, then you're okay with it. Just yeah. like a small little thing, right? Yes. Okay. Integrated. So where it's like, you, you can't even tell. Now, let me ask you guys this. Is there a point where Disney goes overboard incorporating Walt Disney animatronics too much into the parks? Like if he's in, let's say he's in Carousel Progress with the Sherman brothers, and then they decide they want to put him in the Hall of Presidents. And then they decide they want to put him in the Tiki room. Let's say hypothetically, obviously there's no space for him in the Tiki room, but let's just say, like at the is there is there uh I like love too, Walt. Too, I, is there like a too much of a good thing yeah. with I, I love Walt that? Disney but that would be overkill. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think there is a line. I think I think I think that for me personally, I think the the great moments with, with Mr. Lincoln and your your carousel of progress idea, I think we're good. Um, but like if we start adding it to Tiki Room and this thing and that thing, then it becomes yeah, you're kind of like it becomes it, it kind of goes from homage and tribute to like like exploiting almost you know what i'm saying i agree i agree 100 percent. and especially if they put it in the international parks because at that point like you said they're just exploiting it and, and they're duplicating like they would a land you know hey let's monetize walt disney you know exactly well said that's exactly it so yeah they have to be really careful with that you know so we'll see. Interesting stuff though. Interesting stuff. We'll see if it turns up in uh, in Disneyland. The, the rumor is though, pretty strong that he is showing up. So we'll see how it turns out. Now I now, do I do think really quick. Obviously, still a very high possibility of it of Walt coming to Walt Disney World. I'm just saying, in the mindset of the Imagineers, do you think that they may not do it because technically Walt never really stepped foot on the finished grounds of Walt Disney World. Where with Disneyland, that was his home. He was in there constantly. Well, well that's why the Carousel of Progress would work is because it's the Carousel of Progress. And so like they moved that part of Walt Disney's idea over there. And so like 
he would be more so part of the Carousel Progress more than a part of Walt Disney World, even though the Carousel Progress is like inside of Walt Disney World. There's like a, I don't know, I feel like there's like a, I feel like there's a, um, like almost like a ontological separation between the two. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, makes sense. yeah. And, well, and then you also already have the partner statue by the castle. So it's like he didn't take, he never stepped foot in the magic kingdom, but he is represented in statue form, at least um, in the magic kingdom. He's also, I mean, he never stepped foot in DCA as, as a park. Um, he's never stepped foot in Hong Kong or Shanghai or any of these places. And they all have um, Walt's statue. So I, I don't think there's much. But the only, the only reason why I asked that is because a statue is more of a representation that you're honoring someone in that sense of their accomplishments when you do an audio animatronic it's supposed to relate to the fact of that it's really that person or slash character yeah but i, I do understand did. what slimer's saying that when, when you kind of walk into the carousel of progress it's basically you're walking into its own entity even though it's kind of already you know on the grounds of walt disney world but it's just what solidifies what the character because technically the carousel of progress was over at disneyland first which uh well, yeah, and it was actually over at New York uh, World's, Fair, World's Fair even before yeah. that. So, and, yeah. and Walt was alive for that. So, yeah. I think it's appropriate. I don't think that would be an issue at all. And with Richard, Richard um, passing just the other day, um, Richard Sherman, and 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 all that, I think it would be a really beautiful tribute both to Walt and yeah. the Sherman. Uh, I think it would be a great idea. It just makes me wonder if that's where Imagineers' mindset is, because yeah. you know how they can be a little bit. Well, yeah, iffy. and it's gonna be it's gonna be iffy too because that's something that they probably will announce at D twenty three. I'm assuming if it is gonna happen, I'm very curious what the audience is gonna think because you're in a room, a stadium, the Honda Center, with thousands of of diehard Disney fans. What are they gonna think about that? Are they is it gonna make them a little uneasy, or is, are they gonna welcome it? You know what I'm saying? So we'll see. It's gonna be interesting. We're we're treading new territory here, kind of, but. That brings us to our next topic, which is Morocco at Epcot. They have been doing some tile work over here at the, at the Mor Morocco Pavilion. This is an older picture of some of the tile work that they had in Morocco. Very authentic to the area and beautiful stuff. I mean, look at this fountain. It's, just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, friend of the channel, Belle, who does amazing work over here. She is awesome. Um, Bell posted this on X. Let me just pull this up real quick. And she says here, overall, the Walt Disney Imagineering refurbishment of the Morocco Pavilion has gone well. However, we have our first misstep, and it's a big one. The elaborate planters, once handcrafted by the King of Morocco's artisans, I did not know that, by the way. That is really, really cool has been dumbed down using tile, which belongs on a restroom tile floor at Hollywood Studios. See, this is what makes me the most mad about this. You have a lot of put, you have a lot of push from Disney right now about inclusiveness and authenticity, authenticity and getting the culture right. We're seeing a, a big push even with Tiana's to get the culture of New Orleans correct in this attraction and things like that, right? You wanna get it, you want to get it right. And I think that's an important thing, right? And then you have something like this where it's almost like total disregard for that. Like this was, this is, this was, these were handcrafted by the King of Morocco or his artisans. Right. And you go there and you just like rip it out. And then you put this kind of like more generic tile. It's like, okay, you know what? Like you guys are so worried about the inclusiveness and the cultural accuracy. But in this case, it was like, who cares? I think that's kind of disrespectful. And I, I, I hope that I hope they change and, it. I hope I don't know. Well, honestly, for me, I and I could be wrong, but it almost feels like there's a lot of ignorance um, that could come along with these group of people that don't even really pay attention to the fact of saying, oh, yeah, maybe we should kind of take a step back and like remember, yeah, this actually came from the artisans of the King of Morocco. You know, maybe we can kind of preserve it or maybe just like you know give it some, some a fresh thing it's like no yeah let's just rip it apart and we'll put in uh something from you'd see in bed bath and beyond it's like it's honestly it's like they don't even think about what they're doing they're just like okay yeah it needs updating so let's do it. but on, and honestly it 
I, I think it's honestly a, a, like on borderline insult, <laughs> to, to be no, honest with you. No, that's what I said. I think it is. I mean, I think it's like, what's and, going on? Uh, and But they've been having like so many issues just overall with the Moroccan pavilion. And it makes me question the fact of how long that this this pavilion could even potentially stay there because they've had a mm -hmm. lot of issues like with the mm -hmm. licensing with uh, their restaurants and everything. And I, uh, I think what Disney's trying to do is they're trying to kind of make a middle ground thinking, okay, well, this kind of looks a little bit like it's uh, they're not looking at the inclusive side, but they're looking at, okay, well, this could offend somebody or, you know, this is kind of like, uh, you know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, yeah, we'll update it, but then they're not looking at the bigger picture that well, it's like you're, you're taking away the culture. Uh, you kind of, you might have hit something on the head here, um, George, when you said you don't know how long this pavilion is going to be around for. And that might be the whole point of this entire thing. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, it could be, yeah. Right, Slimer? They might be, yeah. they, this might be not long on this earth. This was a quick fix because. They know maybe it's not going to be around in four or five years or whatever. What do you think, Simon? Yeah, I agree, man. I mean, they have really they have a really good bar right across from this. Uh, uh, they they serve fantastic drinks. They're overpriced as everything is in Epcot. It's the only place I go to in the Moroccan Pavilion because they have the Moroccan meal, which you can get for about eighteen dollars. And um, yeah, that I mean to me that is the only saving grace for Morocco from my perspective. I do like walking around the shops. You know, they have the, um, you know, the henna tattoos back there if you want to get a henna tattoo. Um, but it's it's been reduced to utterly just that. There's there's a restaurant as well. So you can get authentic uh, Middle Eastern cuisine. But now that they've turned it into an AP Pass Holder Lounge and, you know, they're doing this. And, oh, by the way, like, here's the thing too. Like, we're criticizing this because – at one point, it was held to high standard. So it's not that we're making mountains out of molehills because we're not the ones that set the standards to begin with. When this was still sponsored by you know, Morocco, they actually had, as it says here in Bell's post, King of Morocco's artisans do the tile work on this. So we're not setting the standard here. We're judging it by the standards set by the Walt Disney Company. Okay? Right. So don't look at us and say, hey, you guys are just being crazy. And I was like, no, 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 no. There's a reason this is a big deal on, on Twitter. And by big deal, I mean calling the Imagineers out for what seems to be either, like George says, like it's just utter disrespect or just a a, a lack of judge or just a lack of judgment. Um, or, or gee, like he said, man, they just don't give a shit because they're going to get rid of the Morocco Pavilion anyway. And it's on the chopping block because it's not being sponsored by Morocco anymore. And it hasn't been for some time. So, um, you know, th they could have done it right anyways. Like, I don't feel like if they're going to get rid of the Moroccan pavilion, why not just do it right anyways to avoid these kinds of issues? Right. It's, exactly. it's not, ex it's not ex in the grand scheme of things. It's not expensive. Exactly. And they may, they may want to get rid of the Morocco pavilion in the sense of, because Y you know, a lot of controversy coming, you know, from the where, you know, Morocco is located, you know, and what have you. But, yeah, so if that's the case, just very subtly say, hey, you know what, we're moving in a different direction. You know, there's going to be a new uh, a new country, a new pavilion. But to do this along the beaten path to say eventually, yeah, we're going to get rid of the Moroccan pavilion. But this adds all more controversy on top of the controversy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, we could speculate, and that—that's what they could be doing. They could, they could, it could be a short-term fix, but it was handled so poorly, you know. And if they are going to replace it, then leave it alone, and then just bulldoze it when you're ready. But like this makes it, like you said, George, so much worse. So I don't know what's going on. I really don't. And and now they're kind of in a pickle because I'm sure those tiles were not saved. I don't know how you would even save them, you know? And so yeah. if they were ever to bring any of that back, they'd have to, what are they going to do? They're going to have to contact Morocco and see if they can get these art, some of these artisans that can do that kind of stuff back in here again. It's just a mess. It's an absolute I mean, mess. It's, it's pretty bad when Eddie Soto on Twitter comes on and chimes in and says, this was such an easy project for you guys to do. And says, you guys could have gone, you know, your materials here or there. But the fact that you guys didn't, I'm not quoting him by any, any, you know, I'm not quoting Eddie. I'm not trying to do that, but um, it, it's kind of weird because like we go to bat for the Imagineers so often, 
right? Like we're yeah. always batting for the Imagineers. And then they can't get the towel right in the Morocco Pavilion. It's like, uh, huge which one misstep. is it, guys? Come on. Come, Come on. on. Huge misstep. That's why it's crazy to me when I think about it, too, because like the Imagineers, sometimes they hit these massive home runs. A lot, I know a lot of people don't want to give the Imagineers credit for like the Tokyo uh, Disney, uh, D Tokyo Fantasy Springs stuff, but that's who created that. It was the Imagineers who did that. It was the Imagineers who did Arendelle in Hong Kong. It was the Imagineers who did Zootopia. These are quality. These are quality products coming from Imagineering. Clearly, this this division knows what they're doing. Then they drop the ball so hard on this. Well, look how what we were even just talking prior to this. They, there's potential they could be making a Walt Disney audio animatronic, and then we we have like something of that, and then move to this, and it's like. Like, what are Imagineers thinking? Like, are these like two separate groups of Imagineers where you have like the seasoned Imagineers and you have the newcomer Imagineers that just don't give it, a shit? It, unless, to be fair, we were, you know, it wasn't their decision. It, it's very possible, too. Yeah. It was a it was a Josh Diomaro or someone else in management who said, you know what? Th these tiles are too hard to maintain. Uh, rip them out and we'll put generic tiles in there it could it could have been also to be fair above the imagineer's head yeah and i think that's very likely the case you know so but if it is very but if it is very likely the case like there's still somebody to blame you know like oh, yeah. okay if we're passing the blame from the imagineers to you know a, 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 a penny pincher like what's the name of this penny pincher i want to know like <laughs> who is this guy that's just like no we can't have nice tiles there we got to put bathroom tiles there <laughs> It's wild. It's wild, Slimer. Yeah, it was. This is this is a huge. First of all, the park. It, it's a huge loss for the park itself, and it's also just a huge PR blunder. I mean, it, Disney's getting raked over the coals on Twitter. Like you were right. Like everyone's talking about this, and there's people, honestly, that 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 people would call pixie dusters, right? And, that are even coming out saying this is unacceptable. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. You know, even people who are typically very positive with Disney are coming out and saying, this is, this is, how can they do this? So it's because going to be it's interesting. Such, it's so simple. It's like such a simple solution. Like if there's people that get this kind of stuff done in their houses, I mean, we're not talking about, uh, well, even, even if this impossible. was going in, I wouldn't even pick that, even that color scheme and palette. I think it's god awful ugly. Is it ironic that it's the same color scheme as the uh, Tiana's food sign? <laughs> oh, may, maybe they have some extra tile left over. Oh, man. Because that's what I was saying, too. Like, if okay, if you want to have a cheaper alternative, then get, like, like generic tiles that, like, or, like, or, like, imitation tiles that look the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't need them handcrafted. If, you, if uh, Disney doesn't want to have the handcraft thing because it's expensive to maintain, fine. So get manufactured, like, you know, fake... <laughs> ones that look handcrafted at least that look like the, the, the how they did before at least do that you know what i'm saying it's like if you can't afford a gucci purse at least get the the knockoff gucci purse that looks like the real gucci purse and it kind of has the same effect right same <laughs> idea here you know just get the so, knockoff dude, you, that just, looks real dude you just sounded so california right now <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah so los angeles right it's crazy it's crazy but i do also think too that you had mentioned og is the PR PR yeah. at Disney right now, they, that's a department they really need to look at. And again, I hate saying that people really, cause I hate to see when people lose their jobs. But I, again, if you don't know what you're doing, then you need to go into another field because whoever is taking over the PR right now, they, they need to reconfigure that department. Yeah. I mean, I think they've improved in the PR, but they still make blunders though. And this it's, is a huge one. Yeah. It's two, it's two step forward, one step back with this company almost at all times. Yeah. It well said. Exactly. So it's interesting, you guys, I'm telling you th this, this, this Morocco tile stuff, we haven't heard the last of it. Do you, but, do you guys, uh, when I go there next, you guys want me to chisel out a piece for you guys and mail it to you? Yeah, <laughs> there, you go. there we go. Put it, put it right here next to Spider Man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> but gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming on, talking shop with me today. This was a really good time. A lot of great stuff. We talked about the you know Desantis and the roads. We talked about Morocco uh, tiles. We talked a lot about Tiana's. A lot of great stuff. Um, George, I will start with you, the Italiano. If you let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media, sir. 
Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you can find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. And down below, last but not least, we got Slimer. Well, welcome back, Slimer. It was good. It was good talking shop with you. If you could let everybody home know where they could find you on social media. A pleasure inviting me on back. Uh, I, I love talking to you guys as always. Overall, very positive things happening at Walt Disney World. Yes. We have our nitpicks. Okay. We always do. They'll never go away. But overall, we're pretty happy with uh, everything that's happening down there. Um, you guys can find me on Orange Grove 55 right here. And you guys can find me on X at Slime Square 84. Yes. And if you are a big Ghostbusters fan, this is your guy. So make yeah. sure you find couldn't imagine it. why. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. I are you? Do they still sell the uh, the the slime, the ecto slime, or whatever? Like, can you ever? Can you buy that still? Like anywhere? Mm, no, no. You can home make it though. Pretty easy. You can home make that stuff. Yeah, it's super easy, man. I'll I'll, I'll put the ingredients. I'll put a, a YouTube a YouTube video of how to make slime on my ex. So if you guys want to make it. Uh, especially you i'm uh, curious you dude. super mm -hmm. simple okay i'm very intrigued i'm very intrigued thank you gentlemen for for what, what, okay george has a joke what's your joke yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's over there breathing hard i can i i know george so well i can see it all over his face <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really shouldn't. No, George's like, I, I already know what he's gonna say. He's like, I can make homemade slime. Like, there it is. I, I will say, I will say for everyone who knows me, just like these guys here, you could read my pun. There we go. There we go. Yeah, the the the, the joke wrote itself, huh, George? There we go. We, 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 we know the joke without even knowing the joke. Exactly. Slimers be sliming. There we go. There and, we don't go. Forget, and don't forget to tell George our, our no blondes at Casey's Corner only footlongs. Right. <laughs> only footlongs. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for watching this episode of OG55. And until the next time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>